1957. And this is during the Cold War. Exactly. And you are up against the Russians. This is Khrushchev has just taken over, and we don't know what we've got going on. And I'm curious whether that was part of the psyche that was going on with the Cornell crew. The Russians weren't wasting a minute. They were on their way out to their elimination race. They were going to show us just what kind of a crew they were. The shell started from gates, much like the start of a horse race. The course wasn't wide enough for a power boat and a crew at the same time, so everyone had to pedal after their crews, including Coach Sanford. Close behind him were three spies, two Englishmen and one Russian. They wanted to know our time nearly as much as we did. It's an interesting story that I didn't tell today. The Russian crew stayed in a, in a lodge quite near us in our three weeks or so at Henley. We got to know them fairly well. We traded some g small gifts. And they, their coach, invited us to come, after we were in the European Internationals in Lucerne, Switzerland, to come to Leningrad for the Russian championship. Well, coaches and managers got on the phone, and the uh, State Department said, you know, no way. The Russians said they could clear the red tape in a matter of a few days, and the Americans uh, said, we, we can't get you, uh, we can't allow you to go. I think it was about four years after that, if you recall, the ping pong team, team was the first American team to go to Russia. Right. And it was in the height of the Cold War, but we, we thoroughly enjoyed it. They were professional oarsmen. They had done nothing but row uh, for um, Club Krasno Zemania out of Le Leningrad for three years, and they re represented the uh, the USSR in, in uh, Russia. I have a, cert, a, a shirt that says USSR on it. No kidding. <laughs> You're in line going for the football team. I mean, typical Cornell, yep. and here you are from Climber. Uh, you probably had never rode in your life. Never did, seen a, even seen a shell. So you get sized up by a guy who's looking basically I don't want to say physique. for rejects, but... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We, well, this was right in the registration. This was uh, unbeknownst to him which one of us had been recruited to play football. Our crew outweighed the Cornell line <laughs> wow. for, I think, all three years. We used to get a little uh, press out of that. <laughs> you get into this, what we call the pickle boat, which was wider so that there was a... a gangplank down the middle that the coach could walk on and you had like six starboard oars and six port oars out wide and it was like a it was like a garbage scow uh -huh. really it was wide and it moved slow but he was able to teach you the mechanism of timing your seat your hands and your body to start to get the idea one of the real tricks of rowing is to have your timing so good that you don't you don't, you're a stable boat. And the, and the single skulls are even more that way. I mean, they're, they're round bottom and they easily tip. And if you tip, you don't get a clean recovery. And your number was? I was stroke, I was number eight. Number I was, eight. I was, I set the pace for the rest of the crew, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, so that's, yeah. is that the way it's set up? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? Well, usually we try to, yes it is, yep, exactly. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the exact order that we that we were, and the coxswain is here right on the fold. Right. He's a little guy. He's he's the jockey, you know. He steers <laughs> and quarterbacks. Is that the wrestler for you? That's the wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> you loved him and you hated him. He was a little. <laughs> come on, come on, you know. Up to, up to, you know. <laughs> Trying to keep the right cadence. And he's also the lawyer now, right? Yeah, he's a, a very good trial lawyer in Washington. Yeah. Uh, so literally freshman year, you have this group together. Did you get a sense there was a camaraderie among yourself? We did. Yep. You know, I don't think I, I think I intended to say it in the, in the talk and didn't. The physical likeness was one thing, but liking each other and getting along mm -hmm. and not having a complainer, not having a whiner or, or an arrogant person who does. We, uh, we were, we, we became team friends then and we've become we've been lifetime friends ever since it just happened that's that's where the good fortune comes in right. we would row in the lake about 14 to 16 miles a, a, a afternoon going out about 4 30 getting in 6 30 or 7. once the season started you would uh, 
uh, on Monday, you would have a long low row. Uh, by a low row, I mean rowing at 24 or 25 strokes a minute rather than racing, which is about 31 and a half strokes a minute. And then on Tuesday, you would have, usually have a time trial against the JV and the third boat. The team that beat us most, and the reason we were as good as we were, was our JV boat. <laughs> on a given night, would beat us. And they went on to be an undefeated uh, team uh, a junior and senior year. So in 1957, you know, when you are you know, win the, the championship, are there eight teams? Is, what's a normal... That too has changed tremendously. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the 50s and up till about 61 or 2, the national championships were, were a three-mile race, a long, lower-stroke race, rowing at 30, 31, 32 strokes per minute. Mm -hmm. Twelve wide, all or nothing. Twelve boats were allowed in from their earlier season uh, uh, so it was performance. One-shot deal. One shot, you rode up twelve across the wow. across Lake Onondaga, and away you went. In 1956, Melbourne. You're, I don't know if it was on, te on television or not, but you must have been dying a, a thousand deaths watching Yale win. Very sad night. <laughs> very sad night. <laughs> were you rooting for them or against them? Well, well what, I mean, at the Olympics. The Olympics oh, yeah. very much rooting for them. And, 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 and no, I thought you were talking about the Olympic trials. No, no. No, by all means, we were rooting for them. Uh, you know, if you wanted to be beat, you wanted to be beat by the best, sure. best crew in the world. They lost in the first round. At, in Melbourne. Oh. So uh, the Olympics are a, a, a double elimination. And a, the word that's, I don't know it's used in any other sport, but if you lose in the first round, or it'll depend on how many nations are there, but they have what they call a rapid charge. Well, the rapid charge is the round of losers. So the way to get back into either the quarterfinals or the semifinals is to win the rapid charge. Like, I think in the first round, two teams qualify for the quarterfinals. If you're third or fourth, you go into the rapid charge. Yale was third mm. in the first heat. They had to row in the rapid charge uh, two days later, won that, won the semis, or quarters, won, won the semis, and won the finals. They beat, uh, can, uh, they beat Canada by a deck, and four of the nine oarsmen had to be picked out of the boat. It was an all-out effort. It was uh, there's a, the, this book that is being written right now uh, is tells that story the best I've heard it. So I'm a little brought up to date on that. We had some. It wasn't unusual to have somebody hardly able to get on their feet you know, on the boat. When we were in, in Europe, uh, at, on the Rotzi in Lucerne, Switzerland, uh, myself and two of the other oarsmen had to be helped out of the boat. We were. They, they were we were. We use the last ounce. At the end of a victory, is there something you drink? Is there something you <laughs> drink? We weren't allowed to drink. <laughs> you throw the coxswain in the water. Oh, okay. Yeah, the coxswain is uh, picked up by arms and legs and heaved as far out into the front of the dock as you can throw him. And then, of course, the shirts mm -hmm. are are an important part of that. Uh, you know, you make yourself available, the winning crew. Usually the winning crew comes in last, I mean, comes back to the dock last, and these guys are all shaking their heads. Mm -hmm. And the, the losers, you're still doing it in all the races, aren't you? Betting shirts? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was, you know, as I look back on it, it was a tur huge turning point in my life, and I sure. probably, frankly, never would have gone down if he hadn't have made that pitch. Mm -hmm. But rowing as a, as a, as a whole, uh, probably gave me and the confidence, the understanding of teamwork, and whether you want to talk about peak and peak founding or whether you want to talk about our new love of bicycling or whatever, uh, I'd probably still be milking cows and climber. Do you have an oar at home to shoot oh, yeah. your I, career? I have the Henley Row and the oar uh, in our den, yeah. All of us went away with a feeling that we had just participated in the greatest event in our lives, and one which none of us would ever forget.